mercy and peace are yours from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A portion of God's word for our consideration uh, today as we celebrate this third midweek Advent service is again found in Psalm 119. Let's begin with prayer. O Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts may they be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Have you ever prayed against yourself? Just think about that one for a moment. Struggling to think of an example? Well, the truth is you have. I want you to think about it again, just for another moment. Have you ever prayed against yourself? Still struggling to think of a time? Well, every time you pray the Lord's Prayer, specifically the third petition, your will be done, you're praying against yourself. When we pray your will be done, we are not asking God to bring his will into alignment with ours. No, just the opposite. We are imploring God to bring our fickle and unpredictable wills into harmony with his good and gracious will. We're praying against ourselves. Can you see the conflict here? Can you see the hardships that that might bring into our own lives, at least according to our sinful nature? This is the tentatio that Luther refers to in our third focus here as we look at how Luther studied God's Word. This is the spiritual attack that comes upon us when we meditate on God's word. And we see it so clearly in Psalm 119. Here, just look at verse 153. See my affliction and deliver me, because I have not forgotten your law. Meditating on God's word, striving to keep God's word, praying over God's word, brings affliction. Where does that affliction come from? In his explanation to the third article of the Lord's Prayer, Luther writes, God's will is done when he breaks and defeats every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh, which try to prevent us from keeping God's name holy and letting his kingdom come. And there they are, the source of our affliction. The familiar three who are constantly battling to bring us down. And the more that we remember God's word, the more that we love his precepts, the more that we rejoice in his sayings, the more that we love God's word, the more we become targets of spiritual attack. And so we need to pray against ourselves. Why? Because we have a sinful nature that does not want God's will to be done, nor can it do so. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 8, For the mindset of the sinful flesh is hostile to God, since it does not submit to God's law, and in fact, it cannot. We need to pray against ourselves, because the world does not want to see God's will be done. Look at verse 157. Many are my persecutors and my foes, I have not turned from your testimonies. Can, can you sense the pressure that the psalmist is facing to conform to the patterns of this world, to turn away from God's word? Can, can you feel the pressure that he's under from these spiritual attacks? Look again at verse 161. Officials persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. It, it brings to mind the words of Jesus from John chapter 15. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me first. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it. For that very reason, the world hates you. John reminds his readers in his first letter of something very similar. Do not be surprised, brothers, if the world hates you. We need to pray against ourselves and ask that God's will be done because the devil is constantly working to see that it is not. The 
devil encourages our sinful nature. He empowers the world. He whispers in our ear that all of the trials and all of the sufferings, all of the hate, they're just not worth it. We would love for us to believe that. But the psalmist won't have it. The psalmist won't let that happen. His study of the word has proven to him that just the opposite is true, that it is worth it. Just look at how boldly and confidently he calls on the Lord for his deliverance from these spiritual attacks. He says, see my affliction and deliver me. Argue my case and redeem me. Give me life according to your saying. Your compassions are many, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. See how I love your precepts. Lord, according to your mercy, give me life. The third petition of the Lord's Prayer is a dangerous prayer because we are praying against ourselves, and yet at the same time, it is a prayer of confidence. It is a prayer that brings peace. It is a prayer that gives hope because we know what God's will is. He shared that will with us in his word. We know because of Advent that God's will was to send his son and that humble infant who was given the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His mercies are great. His compassions are many. God's good and gracious will is our salvation, which he accomplished by sending Jesus, who kept God's will by living and dying and rising for us. But that's not all. Luther continues, God's will is done when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and in the faith as long as we live. This is his good and gracious will. And again, the psalmist puts that truth on full display here in Psalm 119. I hate and detest falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous judgments. Great peace belongs to those who love your law, and nothing is a stumbling block for them. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them greatly. I keep your precepts and your testimonies because all my ways are before you. These words of confidence Psalm 119 can be our words as well. It can be ours because we are connected to God through faith. And by God's power, as we stay connected to him through his word, we can echo the words of, these psalm, of this psalm. These words are our words. God's will is being done as he strengthens and keeps us in the one true faith as we stay connected to his word. Our new man rightly says that we love God's law. We love his testimonies and his precepts and his sayings. We love them greatly. And despite the spiritual attacks that we have, that we face because of our relationship with God, we have great peace. Peace in knowing that God loves us, that he sent us his son to save us, and that he's coming again. When you really think about it, the Christian life is one long Advent season. We look for a Savior who has already come, who comes even now in word and sacrament, and who is coming again. And while we wait on his coming, we face spiritual attacks from all of those who oppose God's will. We have a Savior who has died in our place, who has defeated our enemies, and who has promised to come again. And so clinging to that word, we pray, Lord, according to your mercy, give me life. Some of your word is truth. 
we can face any spiritual attack that the devil, the world, or our sinful nature brings. Not because of our power. Not with confidence rooted in ourselves. Because our confidence is rooted in God's word. And so we pray against ourselves. Your will be done. Amen.